All right. So Scott Galloway, he's been making the rounds. He's got a new book out. He's talking a lot about the definition of masculinity. And so I've listened to many, many of his interviews, but he mentioned that this one concept that I've been thinking a lot about lately. So I wanted to play this clip for you and, and try to understand uh, what this means for our understanding of masculinity. And Richard Reeves of Boys and Men fame has this great frame, and that is adding surplus value. I teach my boys, I'm like, you're negative value right now. Your mom spends a ton of time. We spend a ton of money on you. We give you more love than you give us. You go to school. This incredible infrastructure is spending time and energy to educate you. I'm like, when you become a man is when you're doing enough for other people that you're adding surplus value. You're producing more than you're taking. I this is one thing I, I found that this, this idea of, are you actually, you know, sort of justifying your existence? Are you sucking more out of the world? Like there's, there's multiple lenses to think about this through. I think a lot of times women really struggle with this as a, as a concept, because I don't think this is really an appropriate way to think about femininity. I think there's a different way to think about it. I, I think there's, a, there's an appropriate way to ask this question, you know, in that context. But I, I think men need to ask this question. And I think that there's, there's going to be a lot of bristling about like, this does seem contrary to the nature of the gospel. Like we essentially are just granted through grace, this amazing gift of eternal life and that we're granted this identity as sons. Um, and so I do think that there is a, an initial step that obviously Scott's not going to tease out in this conversation because it's not about the gospel and he's not a believer. But I think, I think if you start with the assumption that we can't bring anything to the table for our own justification, we've been saved purely by grace and that we receive that identity of sonship. At that point, there does need to be this conversation about am I, you need to be some, you need to be making this calculation. Am I taking away more than I'm giving? So yeah, I want to make sure that we're thinking about this through that lens. We, we are first saved and then we ask this question, not, not as a way to earn our salvation, but as a way of really understanding, you know, is there, is there a systemic takingness in my life in general? So he teases us out some more. And I think this is a really great conversation to have with sons in a family context. I love that frame. At some point in the service of others, are you actually giving more than you're taking? Mm -hmm. You know, that's our economy is based on that. Companies that take in resources and then output more than the, the cost of the resources going in. I don't know how I thought of the ketamine therapy, but the only kind of real actionable item I took away from it was like, my boys kept coming up and I thought, if I can love my boys more than people have loved me, if I can push more of that confidence and concern and love to other people, that's the real surplus value, right? Mm -hmm. And that was a nice framing for me. That's like, I wanted to come out with some intentionality around my purpose. That was what I took from it. It's like, I have these vessels that really are open and, and sponges of my time, regard, attention, and love. And if I think one of my purposes as a man is surplus value is how can I do more of that for me, them than was done for me. I have a very complicated relationship with my father. He wasn't very good to me or my mom. But here's the thing. He was much better to me than his dad was to him. And I'm like, okay, he's checked the box in the universe. He's added surplus value. But I think that's a great frame for men. Really. It's important to, to say like the way he's describing this is really there's two, two calculations he's describing. One is sort of, I would say like a micro calculation of surplus value, which is in your own home, like all this stuff is being done for you. Are you actually, so you're talking to your son and, and you're making him aware that there's enormous resources being poured into him. And so part of what he needs to be thinking about on a week to week basis is, am I giving back? Then there's this much more macro question. He's, he's like teasing out and he's saying from the perspective of my multi-generational family, am I actually providing more value to my family downstream than my father provided for me? when I was, that, that's a really good question to ask. You know, I think uh, I've, I've seen in certain situations that again, I, it really balances the scales properly because you have people that uh, really have come from incredibly difficult backgrounds and it's amazing what they're accomplishing in their generation. So a lot of this comes from, you know, the way of thinking about this is if you started at third base, you know, don't, don't, don't think that you hit a home run when, when you get home, right? Some people are starting from a much, much earlier place. And so we have to be really careful with the comparison game. How do we think about it? Do we primarily compare ourselves to people that have come from much more healthy families? Or are we trying to make sure that we're leveling up every generation? 
And I do think there's a tragedy to going down, a, you know, really leveling down in the next generation. That, that, that always really, and that, that, that strikes me very differently. And I think that we can all give each other that kind of grace that no, no part of what we're trying to do is, is improve generationally. Okay, so then he's gonna finish his thought here. Really think about young men, the resources, the government, your family, our society are investing in you. And at what point does it flip and you're actually adding more value than you're taking? Mm -hmm. And a lot of men never get there and grow up thinking that the world is just about giving them shit and spending time and love on them. I think that's a great frame for what it means to be a man. So this, and the um, Reeves book about, about boys, I think this is where he said, he kind of comes up with this frame. So I just want to get your thoughts, Chris. What, what do you think of this idea? Is, is there something core to being a man, to masculinity, in this sort of calculation of surplus value? Is this helpful? Is this somehow harmful? Like, how, how do you process this? Yeah, I think, I mean, it, it's great that you called out the gospel piece to begin with, because I think we, we work from grace, not for grace. But then I think when you work from grace, it, it, if you have this immense gift given to you, it's like your response should be this like overwhelming sense of duty and overwhelming sense of like response and love and gratitude. And that has to, I think, play out in, in really impactful ways of intentionally shaping the culture around you, shaping, you know, the, the world around you. I agree with you that there's two elements, you know, there's the, the micro and the macro. I would even say like, it's, it's not just even the, the family piece, but it's also like, what, what are these future generations doing to the world? And like, when we think about the cultural mandate, you know, in Genesis 128, it's like, we're, we're to be taking something into the world and shaping and bringing a new culture. And so, uh, I, I want to both set up my family multi-generationally with like what they need to continue to give more than they take, but also what are they doing then that produces that next level of impact on the world around them? And I think innate to a man, this, this, this should be something. I mean, this is, we did this in the military. Everywhere we went, there was this often unspoken, but sometimes very loudly spoken rule when you needed the reminding that we always leave things better than we found them. And that has really stuck with me. So like we, we went over to my mother-in-law's house the other day and she wasn't home and we were doing something over there. And then we were getting ready to head back to our place. And it's like reminding the boys, hey, we leave this better than we found it. And I think that's an element in, in a very small way of displaying this characteristic is okay, just because there was dog hair on the, the wood floor when we got here doesn't mean we don't have an opportunity to clean that up. So it's not just putting away the toys that you guys played with in the guest room, but Asher grabbed a Swiffer and went around and got all the dog hair picked up in the kitchen. And it's like, wow. those are those little things. And, and, and I think that accelerates as you get older into thinking about business, like he said, if you, you, if you're extracting more value from customers than you are giving them, then your business is inevitable to fail. Right. And if you're giving more value, this is why Alex Hermosi is blowing up because the guy is just giving exponential amount of value everywhere that he can turn. And the return is that these companies are growing into a massive place. And then they come to him to invest in the business and it grows even more. And it's like, yeah. yeah. So yeah. That's, yeah, what, that's what comes to mind for me. Well, I love, I love the idea of just like, and if, and I, I think this is, I think we have to understand how difficult this is for kids to see, like you have to make it somehow explicit. Like when I, I, I have, you know, when I calculate the amount of chaos that I create in my own home by grabbing a dish, drinking, putting, putting this, like leaving things around the house, I'm constantly creating messes. Like if, if I were to take in one week, the amount of chaos that I have personally produced in my own house, the amount of work to overcome that chaos, the amount of dishes that have to be clean, the amount of, you know, places that need to be like, like th things need to be put back, like on and on and on. Like, and I, kids just generally, they think they're magically in a world where they can just create an endless amount of chaos and that somebody's going to be running after them, picking up all these things. And to actually just get back to even, I think, I think the intuitions that we have, uh, what it takes to get back to even is like, well, if I, if I throw a couple of dishes in the dishwasher, I'm basically getting things back to even like, no, no, no. You, so you have to somehow find a way to like show kids like, no, this is, there's a lot of work that goes into all the things that need to be done in a household. 
to make sure that, that we are creating that surplus value. And that needs to be your target. Don't make your target breaking even. Make your target surplus value. Like I want to I wanna leave things better than I found them. And that's not easy. It's really easy to leave things more chaotic. And so I think that this entitlement that is inevitable when you don't have this expectation for kids. And I think this is a real problem for a lot of people today is that they think, well, I brought these kids into the world. It's really my responsibility to make sure that I am giving them surplus value endlessly. That doesn't help kids at all. They're, they're living in a world in which as soon as they have the power to create that value, you want to begin to, to give them avenues for doing that and then raise the bar properly and create that expectation that this is what it means in, for you to, to be a really contributing person. And I do think that this is a, a really important topic as well when it comes to business, right? Like I do, I agree with you. Like I think that when you're creating a business, I think there are so many businesses that are essentially their model itself is parasitical. You know, I think that if, if you could somehow you just figure out a way to through, you know, investing in cryptocurrency, I can just, I can just make a lot of money and do zero work other than just make a few trades or something then a lot of people are just attracted to that kind of way of, of producing income. And, and they're, they're looking for the easiest possible way. And I think that we need to aim at value creation. And it's not that, that investing doesn't create some kind of value, but it, it, it isn't a great way to primarily think about how you're going to create value in the world. And I think a lot of people are just being taught that take the easiest road possible instead of maximizing value. And I, I think there is something within masculinity that I think needs to be stirred up in men. Like, I want to create as much value as I can. I don't know what that is, but I'm going to really attempt to do this, you know, as much as I can to figure out how can I create as much order as possible. There's so many people in society that are really net negatives when it comes to the creation of value. They're, they're really like just sucking value out of the system that it's gonna require a lot of work from many, many of the rest of us and our families, our children and our grandchildren to make up the difference so that we create a world in which there is surplus value for everyone to enjoy. And so that basic calculation, I think is really helpful. And I think it's an important lens through which to, to, to be training boys and also expecting from, from men in general. We, we are the creators of, of that surplus value.